they jumped on this and actually made my tour happen because they got so excited. And I was so excited because my ancestors come from here in Franklin and Pike County. And uh, they've just done a great job. Joe Abbott with the Sons of Confederate Veterans has been a great help to me. And, uh, I just want to thank everybody. Thank you for having us in here at the church today. People call me an author, and, and it kind of makes me feel weird for two reasons. I've been doing genealogy for about 40 years. And I've been doing research on the South Mississippi for about 12. And all I wanted to know was one weekend, see if I could find out what my grandpa's Civil War history was. And here I am 12, 13 years later with two volumes and other stuff. But I'm not the one who wrote the book. That's what this book is all about. It's Lest We Forget the Immortal South Mississippi. The Immortal South Mississippi is who we remember. Those men and their families. Their brothers, their cousins, their uncles, their grandfathers that fought for the South and from this county as well as the neighboring counties. This regiment was formed in one of the few that was an entire, this brigade actually at the end of the, after it was all put together, was one of the few totally Mississippi brigades. They were named the High Pressure Brigade by, by General Bragg after Shiloh. And that was because they never failed to go forward in the entire, the entire war. Now, they may have been beaten, but if they said it's time to move forward or to charge, the seven always charged. And uh, as a result, a lot of them are on that monument out there. Okay? Uh, a lot of them never even have a chance to charge because they were raised in, right here in Bend County and probably never been any further than maybe Clinton or maybe Baton Rouge. may have gone to Brookhaven or Natchez once in their life. They had never been away from here. They had never been exposed, some of them, to measles in months. We had over 13 men die of measles on the coast before they even had a chance to fight. Can you imagine that? And that happened throughout the war. The lungs epidemics that happened when we were quarantined a couple of times for smallpox. And actually, at uh, Stone River, which we call Murfreesboro, there was a charge by the 44th Mississippi from right here. They didn't have enough guns. They took cedar sticks in their first charge. It's called a stick charge. Those boys said after that battle that they went off the field with more weapons than they had when they started. I guess they found some. That's the way it works. But I'll give you a, a, a little bit more about why this book is not just me. And I, and I, I mean, I'm up here and it's kind of me. I like it. This is kind of neat to be here. But when I first started, I was trying to figure out, how can I tell this story? Can I get a narrator, someone that could tell it that was in the red? And I came up with, maybe I'll use the first young man that died from each company, and I'll let him say something later, as if he's coming back from the grave. I said, no, nah, that's not right, because I would pinpoint certain guys in the regiment and in one of these letters, these guys talked about their mess. Mess number seven. That's where they ate together, slept together, camped together. And so I said, well, I'm just calling mess mate number seven. So if you get the book, you're going to see mess mate number seven. Every once in a while, throws a little zinger in there. You know, when you can't, can't quite figure out what to say, you don't have the facts, mess mate number seven. He says something right now. And in fact, I'll tell you what he said when he left and didn't handle it. Now, y'all do know this is not really this part. smart as they think they are, because this is not as much of an adventure as we thought it was going to be. We're 
sick, we're dying, it's cold, you're making us do stuff. These guys were not used to having to be told what to do every day. Can you imagine if you had a whole life kind of run your own show and all of a sudden you have to march and turn this way when this guy tells you to? They hated drilling. They hated all that. But they had a great time on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And uh, all of you who haven't visited the Mississippi Gulf Coast, it's still a tourist attraction. Y'all knew that, right? These guys didn't know what was down there. They had never eaten oysters before. They had never been able to go out right in front and bathe in salt water. They'd never seen alligator gars in an open place. They'd seen them in a river. But they could play with them out there. They talked about it. Frank Wilkinson from this county said that he saw what they call sting reefs, which is a sting ray to some people. He said they looked like a soft shell turtle with a stinger as long as your finger on the back and worse than a rattlesnake. That was his description. Now, throughout the war, different guys would say things that were kind of interesting. But if you, if you look at this regiment, I'm going to give you a quick one. Here's what happened day to day before, okay? They started out on the Mississippi coast. They got down here in August. Um, the guys from this county caught river boats down the Mississippi to New Orleans. Franklin County and one other unit from over that way, I think Pike County, caught the trains to New Orleans. They had about six companies at first. They caught boats over to the Mississippi coast across Lake Lord, Lake Pontchartrain, and landed on the beach over there and started their camps. Now, I don't know how many of you have gone to like Boy Scout or Girl Scout or hunting camps. After about three days, I don't care if you take showers or not, it's not going to be fun. They said they were so dark with smoke and time that you couldn't tell who anybody was. That, and, but of course, they were having fun. They were all getting to go downtown, getting to walk along the beach. <coughs> so at that time, it was okay. Then guys started dying. After they left the coast, you think, well, now we'll finally get to go to war. The first blood is chapter number two, or number three. Off to who knows where is what we call it. They all said we're leaving. They wrote their wives and said, I don't know where we're going, but we're going. And before they could even get out of Louisiana, we had a train wreck in Pontchartula, Florida. 28 men killed, mostly from Company K and Company H. Company K was our horse here. Company H was from Pike County. Almost 50 men wounded. They had never seen that kind of thing before. They lost more men in that train wreck than any one battle in one day. Then they went north, joined the army in Jackson, Tennessee, and, Henderson, and then fought at Shiloh. Shiloh was the elephant. If you've ever heard that, that's the first time you're in a pitched battle. You, you've seen the elephant once you've been through that battle. On the first day of Shiloh, these boys charged seven 